Good morning everyone, welcome back to Sunny Northfield for our last 16 gents singles tie between John Strachan of Holdsworth who is in the blue and Graham Hume from Spring Hill who is in the red. I'm joined this morning by my colleague Darren Weir. Uh, welcome Darren, what do you think of this morning's game? Thanks Andy, uh, I'm really looking forward to this game between two experienced county players. I think it should be an interesting encounter. Both guys chasing their first national singles title. Lucky enough the sun's out, we've had all sorts of weather this week. Um, it's a bit breezy, I don't know how much effect that's going to have on the balls but I guess we'll find out in the next couple of hours. I'm quite looking forward to this. I'm sure both players will just be happy it's dry just now. Oh, de definitely, after yesterday morning. Was it yesterday morning or Tuesday? Wednesday morning, the monsoon. Uh, luckily the singles guys only started yesterday, they've only had sunshine. So. It's a busy morning at Northfield today. Uh, all sorts of important ties on as we get to the sharp end of the competition. There's been big crowds all week, I'm sure, as the game goes on here, the stands will fill up. I'm sure both players will be delighted with how they performed yesterday, with Graham beating Peter Hosey 21-13. John beating Brian Tate from Wigtown 2014 as well, both in our first round games. <coughs> Two good victories. The first game's always our hardest down here. Some interested spectators from all over the country. We've met a few this morning. Both boys look a bit tense at the minute. Uh, that's oh, got some young spectators. Of course, we're currently live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. The hashtag is Northfield2017 if you want to let us know who you're down supporting. Feel free to do so. John Strachan from Holdsworths won the toss, <laughs> setting off. And he looks like he's picked a shortest jack for his first end. Interesting after two full trial ends. That's an interesting first couple of balls, Darren. <laughs> Good start of the change of length, anyway. Definitely. I was watching John Strachan last Saturday in the Hamilton Trophy final up in Grief. Uh, he had an eventful day. Uh, as Lanarkshire South won the Hamilton Trophy with a last end measure. Uh, he's a bit calmer now. John was a, was a wee bit exuberant after that, as you would be. John holding one at the minute. 
interesting that both players are favouring opposite sides of the rink, but it looks as if they're getting true finishes on either hand. Yes. He's following this one up keenly. Force Graham onto the other side of the green now. Mm, sticking to his backhand. Looking at the head, I'm not quite sure if Graham was to strike it, if the jack's going to come out and if it's going to bounce around across the other side of the rink, so maybe that's why he didn't go to his forehand. Sure he'll be thinking that one down at the first end isn't a bad result. Just settle yourself into the game. Possibly. <laughs> it looks like John's pretty confident he's going to be playing a strike here. Putting a ball in the back and on this side of the green. Well, there you are, you have a better angle here. Now you understand why John has pushed that ball in there. Sticking to the backhand draw. Say Darren, maybe just quite happy to lose a single. It's a wee bit of danger if he took his own out there, he could have lost a three or four. So. Certainly. So that's first shot, first end to John Strachan of Holdsworth. Of course, John has proved himself a hard man to beat in the singles over the last couple of years at Northfield reaching last year's singles final. Going down to Derek Oliver. Certainly, he, he played fantastic all the way through last year. I saw two or three of his games. He just ran into an exceptional performance from Derek Oliver last in the final. And no matter what John tried, it wasn't coming. But it says a lot for his mental strength and his ability that he's straight back to win his district as some feet two years in a row. And funnily enough, he's on the same, this is the same rink. I think he played that final last year, Darren, is it not? Yeah, I'm just wondering if that'll play in his mind or maybe give him an advantage if he knows how it plays. I know there's some of, you, some of you folks out there are always keen to know what type of balls the players are playing with. We've spoken to them and what's this, John? is playing with a set of Australian hens like size fives and I saw a close up there earlier he certainly had them more than one or two years you don't see many of them going around just now but he's obviously confident that he can perform on this green with those and Graham is playing with a set of Taylor International size fours so quite a difference in the two balls and already you can see them taking different lines Good end this for John Strachan. Line a strong two. Looks as if Graham struggling, struggling for his line a wee bit coming down in this direction. Exactly. John will be desperate to get another one in here, covering this white. Putting a lot of pressure on Graham.
Well, he's dropped a third shot in. There's a big gap there. Graham's resisted any temptation to play with weight in the first couple of ends. A wee bit of pressure on him early on here. So a big ball. Definitely. I'm sure he's, he wants to keep it nip and tuck at the start of this game. And he's must be confident this one. He's even got the chalk on it as it's come up the green. There you go. I'm lucky not to make the shot there. Just losing a one. So confident he had the chalk on it before it left <laughs> it left them that. Still, single to John Strachan. It's a big week down in air for the players. Every player in Scotland's striving to get to the national championships, but it's also a massive week for the guys in the purple jackets, uh, the umpires and the markers. In bowls in Scotland, we've got a fantastic group who basically the sport can't run without them. They give up their time, their efforts. Every weekend, <laughs> during the summer months, this is the peak of their year and they do a fantastic job for us. Don't always get the credit they deserve, but as Andy said, these championships definitely wouldn't be able to run without them. Absolutely. I've been here every day. We've got a good team of volunteers with both, uh, both Scotland, and the one thing's for certain, the Purple Jackets are around all day, every day, helping. bit of room here for Graham to sneak one in. Definitely, I think he'd be desperate to get one in close here. He's not too happy with this, so it's, it's always interesting to watch a player's body language and he's just striving for a bit of consistency at the minute. It's always hard to tell with John, he runs up after every ball, you think he's played a cracker, but a bit more confidence about this one. Fall in for the shot. Possibly. Last this line was pretty good. Exactly. He's just struggling for a bit of pace there. <coughs> good chance for Graham to level the score up here. Definitely. He's managed to pick the line. It's just sorting out this weight. No big challenge. Lovely smooth delivery that time. This looks on the right track. And he's picked up a pair. The score's tied at two shots apiece. be interesting to see if Graham tries to change the length here. Of course. Just keeps playing away at the length they've been playing so far. As I was saying earlier, we're down to the, the, the middle end of the the week in Northfield. And we've got singles, pairs, triples, fours, action all over the complex. This is green A, uh, which 
which is known as the championship green. But over the five greens, there's some exciting action going on. And they're back to playing opposite sides of the rink here. John started well coming down this direction. He certainly has. John's a very experienced player. This is his eighth appearance at the national championships. He's also been runner up in the fours as well as last year's singles final. That's exceptional. Coming from a strong area in Lanarkshire, that's, that's some record. He's a great character. A great character. He wears his heart on his sleeve and makes him very likeable. Interesting guy to watch. Even to win the singles at a strong club like Holdsworth. Two years in a row is no mean feat. Absolutely. If, if, you remit, if you think about it, to get to this length, these guys have won perhaps five, six games in their own club championship, five or six games in their own district championship. They're on their second game here at Northfield. It's a major, major achievement for any bowler to win the Scottish title. Say John Spokes there. You can see by the number of stamps over the years. He's uh, there's an old saying: if you find something that works for you, why change? Uh, ter terrific stuff there, Darren. Two touches from John Line. Two, maybe three. I'm sure we alarm bells are ringing here with Graham. He picked the length of this jack, and be disappointed with his first ball dropping a few yards short. Gave John the chance to get in early. Definitely. He's got a couple of options here. It looks like he's going to stick his forehand and play just into the short ball. <coughs> fraction on the high side. And but what we've seen for the first three balls, John will fancy his chances of being close here. There's not a lot of danger. Straightforward draw. Use Graham's ball as a, a jack. Wonder if he's just sitting looking at that. Maybe turns it down for a full count. He's certainly looking at it. He's just checking the angle of this jack to see if he does move it. It's famous large words, but I can't see what the danger is going to be. What do you think, Dan? As long as he's just drawing weight, even if he sits his own down, he'll still lie. Two or three. He's maybe just seen whether he needs to actually turn the ball out or just roll the jack to make it a three. In the end, he changed his hand. I'd love to know the thought process beside that one. But anyway, he's picked up a two and he'll be happy to move on. Pick his own jack length. And the score is now John Stracker from Holdsworth, four. Graham Hume from Spring Hill, two. just been given through some, uh, to keep you up to date, some latest results from the Gent Singles games who have just come off from the 9.30 session this morning. Uh, first up we had Andy Dunnett from Queensferry, 10, played Jack Small from West Fife and Crossgates, 21, good win for Jack. Uh, next up, a terrific encounter which kept the, the gallery enthralled on the end rink, on rink 6 we had from Kingswood. David Gregg, 17, against uh, former Scottish junior and senior international 
Martin Rice from Dumfries, 21. And we've got some ladies' single scores. Uh, we have Sandra Dean from Moray, who last year's Super Series winner, 21, against Laura Welsh, Scotland internationalist from Bailiston, 15. That's two fantastic ones Sandra's had. First round she beat uh, Leslie Doig from Strathmiglo, world silver medalist. 21-15, seems to be a good score for her just now. And another results, we have Christine Tennant from New Abbey, 21. And Stephanie Bell from Howard Park, 16. Two other results we've got, we've got from St Ninian, St. Ninian Alec McInnes, 21. Donna Fleming from Busby, last year's champion, has unfortunately been knocked out, 13. Great result for Alex. And finally, from... Glen Lace, we've got Gillian Gorman, 21, and Cathy Houston from Caledonia, 9. Some great results this morning. What do you think this ends like, Darren? Well, Graham's currently lying one. Should we be trying to get another one in? John was reaching it there, trying to turn the jack, or he's below the way. See what the marker indicated there. No, There's possibly no. three. Possibly three. We John's split his backhand. One thing you'll be certain is he be should be reaching this. And we've seen this hand come diving quickly before. He's very close to the white. And he's certainly changed it. I'm not sure if he's still one down. Hopefully we'll see just now. One red to Graham Hume, and I'm sure, given the room he's got here, he'd be confident of making it a brace. Which is exactly what he's done, and he's levelled the score up at four shots apiece. This green A, it's sunk down a little bit with the stands at the sides and the wind doesn't have such a major effect, but it's still quite breezy out there. Uh, interesting to see if it has an effect on the bowls, especially at a longer end here. I'm sure Graham will be looking to get his first ball on it here. Definitely. It's a chocker, but it's just that little bit under the line. John just struggling to adjust to the longer length with his first one. Another chance for Graham here. Yeah. Graham changed his hand after moving the jack across the rink, but obviously conditions are a little bit testy for the pair of them just now. Lee John's taking that wider line, and he's just going to drop in for the shot. Carnegie from Abbey and Ardroth there. Some interesting characters still left in this competition. Some high profile players. And 
whoever wins this year's Scottish Championship will have to prove himself the best of the best. Sure, Graham won't be looking to change much on his last ball. His last ball, he just basically had the right line, just ran into John's first shot. Just needs to run. Sitting up. Marker's going to have a look. Hopefully, he'll give us an indication here. Switch your hands this time from John. He's just gone under it. Maybe having our first measure here. And we've called for the umpire. I'd imagine the first the ball will be getting wedged up. There we go, here's the wedges coming out. like the blue ball there. It's probably why John changed his hand with his last one, just not wanting to turn Graham's in for the shot. Absolutely. No. Quite a bit in Flew it. A couple inches in that, yes, but nothing wrong with asking for the measure. So John was involved in that Hamilton Trophy game on Saturday, an amazing last ball measure situation. Of course it finished 113, 112 against Midlothian. <laughs> if it was anyone who was there will tell you it was an amazing situation, the atmosphere you could cut a knife with. Be John in the middle of it, he had a, let me say, a quiet celebration on the green after the decision was made. Uh, I can't see him quite doing that today, if we get to 20 all in a measure. Amazing that the last two Hamilton Trophy finals have both came down to shot. Certainly after 10 weeks and I've seen them both, I've been 10 feet from them both basically and that's what makes the competition such an extraordinary event. Good lead bowl there from John. quite see what happened there but it looks like John's just, uh, Graham's just dropped in a couple of feet short. Decent line. Good chance for John to pop another one in here. Definitely with Graham dropping that one in it's
diminishing his opportunities for a running shot. Billy Mellers in the background there, the venerable Mr. Mellers, reached this stage again. I think John, I think he'd be frustrated with that. What do you think, Darren? You can see even by his body language he's frustrated with that. He's an interesting guy to watch, is John. Sometimes these scrappy rounds are the most important one to win. Exactly, if you can pinch a one, pinch a two. Graham sticking to the backhand. He just looks not, under again. Not too keen on this one. I think his weight was better there, it was just a blade under. Uh, struggling on this green just now. opportunity here for John, he's <coughs> plenty of balls in the road here to make it hard for Graham to get through, if he can drop a second in here, looks a wide line though, and as I was talking about frustration, there he goes, I think it's baffled him that. We chance for Graham if he could turn that ball out, can make a two or three. Absolutely, he's not played a good end Graham and he's only one down. A chance to convert. Just under the line again. And one shot conceded to John Strachan, who jumps into a 6 4 lead after six ends. Interesting that both players are struggling a wee bit going in that direction. I wonder if the hands are behaving differently or the paces. Certainly, if you'd seen their games yesterday, they were both pepper and the white. New day, new green, new ring. A lot more tension today. You've got through that first round, you know that you're into the last 16. A lot to play for. Definitely. Graham would be very relieved with that. <laughs> As you saw close up there of John, he wasn't happy the minute he let that go. I think he knew straight away he dropped it short. Giving Graham a great chance to drop one in and he's got cover off. John's actually covered it himself. Which is, he has dropped another one in. Good opening, two balls from Graham here. Definitely, it's an interesting end. Wee John certainly never afraid to use weight at the right moment. But he's just drawn in just now. A great attempt. Get some second shot just now. However, he's, he's given Graham a chance to use that as a shoulder. Surprised Graham changed his hand, he had so a wee chance to turn the jack in the forehand. You're surprised, I'm amazed. There we go, what do we know? <laughs> Commentator's <laughs> cuss. So plays it in the backhand. That's why they're in the last 16 of the Scottish singles and we're sitting here watching it. I was, talk I was saying earlier there about John, he's not afraid to use weight. It's obviously an option here. He 
please start for his county. So he has all the shots in his bag. And he's sticking to, looks like decent drawing weight. Fair effort, but he'll be a bit frustrated with that and just didn't quite reach it. Graham still holding on to three there, I think. Exactly. Big end in the course of this match. It's not really got any danger either. As you said about the commentator's curse, we'll soon see. Fantastic delivery. Graham will be delighted with that end. Oh, that a big confidence boost to him. And from 6-4 down, big count of four. Graham Hume from Spring Hill has now jumped into an 8-6 lead after seven ends. That should settle him into the game, of course. This is Graham's first appearance here at Northfield in the singles. He's been beaten five district finals before, but He's an experienced player, he's played for his county at under 25 level in Hamilton Trophy for years. After beating so many times in the district final, he must be on a high to get here and to find that he can perform at this level. He's up against B. John, who's qualified for the national championships an amazing eight times, which is some record, as you say, coming from the tough Lanarkshire districts. He, he's reached the final of the singles before and also reached the final of the rinks and he has two silver medals so he'll be looking to go that one game further and turn that silver into a gold he's also got a bronze medal He's indicating that Graham's drawn the shot with his last ball. <laughs> and from an open hand there, I know John will be really frustrated with that to not reach the head. Say the greens have been in good condition this year at Northfield, have some favourable comments, held up to the rain in the middle of the week very well. Good chance for Graham again here to put John under some more pressure. It certainly is, but he's put a lot of running on this. He almost turned his own out. But he's put a back ball in. <laughs> I think it's a guarantee that. John will be reaching ahead with this ball and he's stalking it up the green. But he's not. He was go he's going to be raging inside after that. Couple of yards short again there from John. Surprised he was shot twice. He had the chance of turning his own in there. Absolutely. From a classy player like John Strachan, he will be raging inside. Anyway, he's given Graham a fantastic opportunity to drop another shot in here and really turn the screw. But he looks like he's on a wide track, which has in turn slowed it up, and he's missed the opportunity. Do you think Dan will change a hand here for John, or will he stick to promoting his own ball? You could see him thinking about it there, after he's played 
two short balls in the forehand there. He's picked the line fine, he just needs to add a couple of yards. We'll soon see how his thought process has worked anyway. He's sticking to his forehand. The danger is you end up putting up a bit extra with adrenaline pumping through you and running through the head. He's on a decent line. Oh, tremendous ball, tremendous ball. After his three opening deliveries, I'm sure he'll be happy with that. Exactly. That single brings him up to seven. Graham Hume on eight. You can see John just thinking maybe about a change of length here. Absolutely, it's been pretty scrappy so far. They've not settled to a length or a line. Not much mat movement. As his game goes on, we'll be curious to see how the two boys will, will react. And just as I say that, John's taken the bull by the horns, he's moved the mat, looks like about what, seven, eight, nine yards up the rink. He's managed to keep the jack. Looks like a hot 25, 26 metre jack. A, a different area of green, maybe they'll find a better line this time. I think with John's strong swinging bulls. This length will maybe suit them a wee bit better. We'll soon find out. That's obviously his hope. <laughs> there you go. He predicted one right there and well done. Graham's sticking to the other side of the green, so this is good stuff to watch. And he's picked the line. Following Graham up the backhand. A closer second shot. And turn Graham switching his hand. Picked the weight again, just a wee blade yeah. under, change his hand. I'm not sure why he did that actually. He played a fantastic first ball. You'd have thought he'd have just followed his first one in, but change hand, change line, makes a more complicated game. Now, I think he might go back to the back <laughs> now. I would imagine so now. And he could do with drop another one in because he's left John a chance to come up the other side, lift the ball out for a three or a four. If he doesn't get one in here. Switching back to his backhand. There you go. <laughs> it just makes that second ball he played a bit curious. I, I, pro I assume he was just trying to reach behind the jack six inches a foot. John will be reaching down the backhand here, he yeah. turns his own in. As I say, John's got all the shots in his bag and I can, you can see him, he's never been, I've seen him many occasions use weight with devastating fashion, so. He's a confident player anyway, he I'm sure he'll back is. himself to get this. Definitely. He's certainly put a couple of yards on this one. Certainly a check changed the end. I think he's possibly still one down though. Look at frustration there, hands on the head. Maybe see another change of hand here from Graham. Back onto the forehander. Well he draws up to John's ball on the other side. Hopefully we'll get back to that shot, because it looked like if he takes John's ball out, there's a chance of a three or a four here. See how confident he is at playing it. Perhaps he's just playing a draw. And he's missed the line. One shot. I 
That's the score after nine ends. Graham Hume from Springhill, nine. And John Strachan from Holdsworth, seven. Nothing in this game so far. Looks as if the player that's first in is hard to change in this rink. Exactly. Celebrity board markers we have there. This is what? My esteemed colleague, District Secretary, enjoying the sunshine. Topping up her tan. I honestly think both players are going to be frustrated. They're not, they're, when they pick the jack length, they're not playing to their own jack length and missing by not just a foot or two, look for a couple of yards. It's John dropping in at Graham's length and Graham's been dropping in at John's length. As you said, Dan, a couple of ends of consistency could be all the difference in this match. Graham pulling up a couple of yards short again. Chance for John. Push it that bit wider, but he's not changed his ball length at all. Forces Graham onto the backhand. Likes this one better. Does is he going to find a road through here? Does. Still blue holding one shot, which is John Strachan. He's now going across to his backhand. This looks a decent track. Yep, he's well played. Very well played. Right in behind it as well. Not leaving Graham any catch. Dropped that shot again, so he's left plenty of room for John. He doesn't have to change much from his last ball. And he'd be reasonably confident in dropping one in for a three. There's a, a big late finish on that hand, but not enough. Two. Two blues conceded by Graham. Levels the score up at 9 all after 10 ends. And we'll effectively start the game again. How would you assess what's been happening so far, Darren? I think both players will still just be looking to get their first ball in when they're picking their length. And that's been their main problem so far. John pulling the mat up again. Interesting. He's obviously got a strategy in mind here. This first ball will be so important. Or he's going to be on the back foot for the end. <coughs> Let's see after picking up that couple where he can drop one straight into the white. Umpire. Graham immediately has his doubts whether it's reached the required distance. Umpire and team's been drafted into Mizak. Oh, 
it's worth calling umpire on if you're not sure in the jack lines. Exactly. It's such an important part of the game. Tag team move in. Looks well up actually. There it is. A couple of feet up. Oh, it's on the re-measure. It's still it's a couple of feet up. Even though there's a bend in the, the tape. So, John recomposes himself. Confident he can pick this forehand line. Good ball, John. And here's exactly why he played that mat length. Graham, after playing a great end up the other hand the last time, chose to follow John. Just knocked him closer. John's starting to find his line in length for the mat up here. He'll be a little, a little unfortunate that he was just a fraction narrow. He's left a great hold here for Graham up the backhand, which is a hand he was certainly could catch in before. And there you are, exactly, exactly why John would be frustrated with that. Great shot. So far, both boys have resisted weight as a tactic. The mat's halfway up the green here. What, five feet from the ditch, maybe now? Ian Jones should be guaranteeing this one way or another. Which he did. He just missed the white. Is he staying on the green? He is. He's got a good back ball. Do you think Graham will be covering that, Darren? Or drawn into the head for another shot? Looks as if he's just drawn into the head for another one. He was fully committed to the draw, which he's done. Lots of options now for John. What do you think, Darren? Definitely. Running shot or a draw? I think he'll be reaching down the forehand anyway. His last ball staying on. Oh, Graham we'll widened the head a wee bit there with his last delivery. We'll see. Spectators watching this one avidly. He's playing that wee runner again. Certainly chasing up this one faster. Very close. What an effort. Didn't miss that by much anyway. No. Unfortunately, he did though, and he's left. Graham with a great chance to drop another one in up his favoured backhand for a three. As I say, our famous saying, there's not a lot of danger. He, seems, he definitely seems to be picking a line with this mat halfway up the green. Which is just what he's done again. Picked up a, a three. Jumps into a 12-9 lead off John Strachan's length. Do you think Graham's going to realise that's two ends in a row? I was just wondering that. I wonder <laughs> if he'll try John's tactic because exactly. he's been playing well at that line. Exactly. <laughs> Often these things happen. You catch the length of the opposition and you, you realise you could play it better than them. But he's not. He's stayed back. Going for a wee bit of a longer length again. Some very interesting tactics. It's a four and a three that Graham's picked up off that mat halfway up the green. Catching that backhand well, coming yeah. back down the way. Exactly. If he, w if he wins this end, it'll be an interesting choice from the next time. Good lead ball. Better start from Graham. Ian hey, Jones. Not found the length. Maybe that is Graham's tactics. Keep mixing it up. Don't give John a chance to settle.
imagine John will be desperate to be up to this jack this time. Looks a decent ball, decent line. Just needs to run. And he's just sneaked in, just dropped in, but still foot short. Maybe 18 inches short. The room for Graham to get round. It's just under the grass zone. So once it cuts on that hand, it's you could, it's just finished. This one's certainly a wider line. Here's that big finish coming in now. Not made it any easier for Graham with this delivery. I'm sure, Marker moves in to give his <coughs> view on how many shots are in it. Since this game started, you see the crowds have built up around Green A. Stands are filled up. Interest spectators leaning over the barriers. Some great matches on this session. Join the afternoon sun at Northfield here and there. Is Graham getting the result here? Split. He's certainly split the balls, but struck back, and it's still one to John Strachan. I think John will be playing that wide line on his forehand again. Exactly. There's Mr. Bobby Wood, Leith's finest, trying to sneak his men at the back there. Wearing his usual shade of pink. As you said, Darren, he's played that wide line. He's gone ultra wide with it. And he's diving now but it's certainly not going to come back quick enough you can see it's not process but picked up a single brings him in a bit closer 12-10 wonder if John will bring the mat up again <laughs> exactly. try and change something last time he's done it he's lost a 4 and a 3 a big big decision this we'll get the new camera angle we'll see he has done it looks like Possibly a couple of yards shorter than he had it before. No, it's not. Well, this is a brave decision. Last seven shots and two ends is massive in a singles game. Graham called the umpire on again. Well, to be honest, if I was Graham, I wouldn't bother calling the umpire on. If I've got a four and a three in the last twice, I'd be playing any length. <laughs> I mean, they have shouted it. Here we go. Does surprise me. What, would you have shouted umpire if you'd picked one of the last two ends coming this way? With big counts? Definitely not. Graham's been catching that backhand really well. Yeah, exactly. John's coming up for a look. <laughs> Maybe it was John that queried his own Jacqueline. <laughs> He's coming up to my look. One, two, and a bit. <laughs> I don't know if he's playing it up or not now. Not sure if he's sure either. <laughs> <laughs> you can see by the the salt tower there, the Bull Scotland salt tower. Quite a breezy day down in Ayrshire. Maybe that breeze is keeping the, those grey clouds we saw a wee bit while they go away. This one. Oh, I shouldn't see. This one's touch and go. John tried to convince the umpire it's up. I'm afraid you can't argue with the tape measure. And it's called legal. Here goes. Jason Banks in the background there, admiring the scenery. From Inverurie. Currently 9 6 down against Eric Ferguson from my own district. A lot to go in that game. The yeah, anyway, here's John. Yeah, I'd be a bit disappointed with that. He just didn't push it to the length. But he has. He's forced Graham onto the same hand. Graham played all his good balls up the other hand the last time. 
just under it. I suppose he's a shot. Much better effort there from John. Whether he's lying or not, he's in a good position. Graham chasing the umpire out the road there. And he's oh, good delivery there. Dropped in for the shot. John urging this one on. Just don't think he's made the trip. He's not fallen down. It's Graham's now switched his backhand. We had all the success the last couple of times coming this way. He's just and turned John in for the shot there. Unfortunately for him, he has. Obviously, he was afraid of John's other ball up the backhand, the shorter one. So he went a fraction narrower, missed the line, turned the ball up. As I said, they're trying any, any way they can to watch this game today. Did Johnny stick to his backhand, his forehand? Of course again. He fancied that one. What a fantastic delivery that is. That will be a big boost for him. I see he, liked that one. He, he definitely liked that one. <laughs> a bit of banter with the audience. That's the sort of thing that John definitely strives on. Could turn him in for three here. Yep. That's, a, that's a bit of a disaster that for Graham. After catching that hand so good the last couple of ends this way, it looks like he's dropped a three. And it was. Sure, John will be looking to kick on from that. Exactly, jumps up to 13 10. Now, he's never had the chance to put the mat up going in this direction because he keep, he's been always been losing the end before. This time he has. And just to see if he does move the mat up. He's certainly got the umpire, ra eh, the marker racing. And the fact he's turned round, it looks like he has got the mat up. Wee Mary that, raising a wee smile at the back there, 13 12. Still don't know what this mat length is. Umpire being shouted again, obviously the mat's up. <laughs> They'd be just well keeping the mat, the long jacket on this rink, <laughs> every end. <laughs> is this the third, fourth time, third or fourth time they've been on? Third time, I think. John's away <laughs> up again. Wait, this is fantastic stuff, John. Graham with a wee wink. Now Aye. To, to <laughs> wonder if he's just trying to break up John's rhythm. John's going to come up and do the big daddy steps here. Here we go, here we go. One, eight, one two. <laughs> Certainly I enjoying himself out there. I can see him getting away with this in the Lanarkshire League, but we're at Air Northfield, John. This one here, here we go. He's convinced it's up. Yeah, big cheer to the crowd there. He's up again. Character anyway, John. He's brilliant <laughs> to watch. Is. You can see he's been having a laugh at the back of the rink there. He's still got that smile on his face. Great stuff. <laughs> He'll be wishing he'd thrown it a yard short. <laughs> <laughs> the match has been played in good spirit between the two boys. They're obviously focused on what they're doing. There's an interesting choice of shot there. I wonder if the break and play had put him off there. Absolutely. I mean, John, that's certainly got his antenna up. He'll have noticed that. And he's now covered that. that. I can only assume that was just a rush of blood there from Graham. 
I can't imagine he was trying to run the white in the ditch with his first ball. And good adjustment, good a couple of feet short. Exactly. John doing the crisscross, he did a lot of that last Saturday at the Hamilton Trophy. See who's lying. At the crossover point there between Greens A, B and C. Always an interesting place. Billy Johnson from Newmaran Fife there standing watching, pretending he knows what bowls is all about. John likes this delivery again. He certainly does, but he looks as if he's going to dip quick. Is he on his own ball? He is, and he's turned himself up for a, a much better single there. Anyway, the little pop will tell the tale here. If we won't get to see yep. it. The sun's definitely coming out. You can see John in these last few ends just getting more confident. He is. He, as I say, he's used to a high pressure environment. John. He'll be starting to love this. That last then will be a big boost to his confidence. Graham looks like he's playing through the head here. Has he missed the line or is he decent effort? I think the white's definitely moved. Still two to blue. A wee bit unlucky there with his yeah. result. He hit so the target, uh -huh. turned his own ball. You can see a noticeable difference in John's body language. He's bouncing a bit of it more. He's a bit more confidence, exuberant. Here he comes chasing this one. He just slips by. It's a good couple there. of feet up. Graham will have to watch. He doesn't come up as. Backhand and promote. He's looking at the forehand shot to push Johns onto his own ball. And if he hits it hard, is it going to stay in the head or is it going to roll out the head? Big decision to make here. Of course, Graham's got the ball right at the back of the rink there. He does. He's, he's playing his backhand. He's got he's a said, chance of Johns' two balls in well, the jack. He ain't short. Up the ball, but no real change. Still two blue. Me, John, his tactics paid off in the end. He might have lost the four and the three earlier, but he's picked a four and a is that a three and a two, three and a two, four and a two, and jumped to 15-12 after 14 ends. I'm sure, we'll see the mat up again here. Starting to yeah. catch that length now. The mat's not the problem, though. It's the jack that's been his problem. <laughs> he's paced it out now. And this oh. I hope this is of interest to anybody who plays two metre mats and just throws a two metre jack every end. This is how you change a game. Fantastic bit of tactical stuff to watch. And it's going that fast, it's keeping the, the marker busy. He hasn't even got time to mark the score, but the score card up before he's setting the white. Look. Don't think we'll see the umpires on here, but we'll Let's see. see. Oh no, I don't know. But they're accepting this one. As I say, it looks like they're only playing a 23, 24, 25 metre jack. It's just on a different piece of land than normally. And Wee John's stuck to his, his plan, despite the early setbacks. I'll give you a quick update on all the games that are on this session in the Gent singles. So say we've got Alan Eyre from Helensborough, who was also in under 25 singles. He's 14. Springwell's Gordon McKenzie is 8. Inverurie, Jason Banks, 6. Uh, Glisnock Valley, Derek Ferguson, 10. From Newgate, Paul Carnegie is 7. Upper Cowell, Stevie Scott's 14. Uh, Billy Mellers is 4. Dean Fleming, Six, sorry, D Billy Miller from Haddington is six, and Dean Fleming from Curry is seven. And at the bottom here we've got Kevin Wallace, good to see Kevin back, 14 from Clark Manning, against Blair Davidson from Blacklands, 13. Some terrific second round matches this morning. And we'll keep you updated as the go game goes on.
John looking to add a third shot here. Just, as, I, as I said in the last end, John, you can see a definite more confidence in his body language. He jumped into a three here. Big, big ball coming now. This game's all about composure, playing under pressure. John away up the green already. Strutting about now. Graham. I think John will be desperate to drop another one in here, which he has done. That's four fantastic winners. Well very well. I say, it, was a, it was very brave of him to keep putting this mat up when he was losing those couple of counts at the start. Backed himself to f find it eventually and it's paid off. He did. It's not left Graham much of a target here. No at all. And he's resorted to a devastating strike up the middle of the green, which he's missed the line. John picks up a four and from being a very tight game, he's romped into a 19-12 lead after 15 ends. Amazing how things can turn around, Dan. I'm sure in the middle part of the game when he lost a four and a three, when he originally pulled the mat up, he'd have been thinking about maybe changing something back, but he stuck with it and it's paid off. We listened to maybe all of us. If you've got a plan, stick to it. What's he done with the jack this time? Looks a bit different. No, he's kept it on the green. As I say, it's been fast, fast moving this game. The, <laughs> the marker struggling team to get the end scored up <laughs> before the first ball's away. Decent lead ball. He only needs two more for victory. I'm sure Graham will be hoping to plough that back quickly. Just under the length. This looks decent. John urging it on. It's another shot. Still no. a wee bit of room for Graham. Certainly. And Graham will be backing himself. He's certainly got the talent to drop a shot in here. But he's just missed the line. Maybe sneak in. Oh, oh. oh he's just Still falling out. If he'd sat up there, he was looking on for the shot. It's yes. a big difference. Massive. Falling out. Absolutely massive. John will be desperate to get one covering this Jack. If he can sit in front of the Jack, he's, Graham's in big trouble here. Let's see. He's chasing this one up green. He looks a decent line. He's just under, but it's a good shot. He's First shot drawn, he'll be happy with that. Definitely. He's First things first, he's lying game and that was his prime objective. Let's see Graham, if Graham can turn this round. Certainly not racing, he's taking his time. Make sure his everything's in the right order here. He looks a decent track this time because he's chasing this up. He's near his own boat. There you go. Sneaks in for the shot. Played. Uh, great result. He was in the area, obviously. John's still got a wee chance to he turn has. the jack round the corner on the forehand. The last couple of years, John's been picking this line here and he'll back himself to just clip the white. And you know the handle's going to bend as it reaches the jack. Let's see if he fancies it. If you watch the player. Yeah, he's really chasing this one up the green. He's confident with this. 
Oh, that's a great ball. Be interesting to see what the marker indicates. Nice. Put it this way, if Graham's lying, I don't think he'll be going near it. <laughs> One blue. Graham has that back ball there, so he may just play for John's ball. I think we'll see a change of hand from here. You think so? I'm not convinced. I think he might just play it and push John's ball onto the onto the white and push the white through the back of the rink because he's got that red ball at the back. He played that shot well the last Aye. time. Just not getting yeah, back Yeah, that's to what he was trying. Still, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Would be one tired marker at the end of this game. John's telling him to get a move on. <laughs> John picks up a one, jumps to 20, match point. 17 ends played. And we just pray he throws a good jack here. Abs, you What's, uh, He's confident he's turned his back on that one. Graham's not had a look at it yet. He's accepting it. I say at this level, the tactical side of the game is so, so important and John's tactics worked and so far, he's going to be disappointed with that. <coughs> Graham dropped the shot in, but it's still plenty of room. wasn't too sure on that one out the hand, he's away very quickly there. <laughs> John will be wondering what's going on, he's, the last four, three or four ends at the mat up he's been really good on that side of playing that hand, playing his forehand and now he's nowhere near it. Graham's <laughs> close again here. Exactly, he's like Graham drop in. This third ball's a big one. He's chasing it close, is he running? <coughs> Not quite. One to Graham Hume at the minute. Nice smooth delivery there from Graham. But he missed the line as well, much like John's first ball. I think John's last delivery maybe put him a wee bit off there. Nope. Still run by it for him. Definitely. John could John will be hope to be in the area here. He could turn his own ball up, draw the shot, reach the back reach the back red ball. And he just we got stung by a wasp there. <laughs> As I said, he's some character as Johnny. There's a bit of a grimace there when he delivered that. I don't know if you noticed. And there's why he just knew the minute he the second he let that go, he hadn't pushed it. Surprised he was short with that. Absolutely. Chance of turning his own into a game. Graham's the one thing Graham will be desperate to do is not to be into John's short front ball. He'll be searching for a wide line with a bit of a hook finish, but he cannot be into that ball and turn it up. As I say, he's pushed it that wee bit wider. And it's just not bending it there. John concedes a one. I think we'll be back to the full length, Jack, with the mat back. I think Graham will definitely be looking to change something anyway. John had a wee bit of a slacker end there, I wonder if just getting to 20 was playing in his mind a wee bit. Uh, possibly, as I say, yep, we've got a full, a full length, Jack. 2013. That single shot at the end is always the hardest one, though. Hmm, still three or four feet away. Player 
John's capability should be drawn in there. This looks a better road. Better weight. Although it's still a yard short. Graham just slipping under John's there with good weight. Obviously he's got, got wants, a, wants the shot, a closer one would have been better for him, but he's got the shot. John's really keen on this one. He definitely is, but he's under it as well. This ball is swinging so hard. Still one down, I think. Interesting that Graham's changed the backhand. Nothing's yeah. really changed exactly. on that forehand side. Exactly. He's drawn the first shot here. He certainly has, and that's blocked the line then that John's been playing. You think he'll change hands as well? He's hard to read sometimes. <laughs> He's probably decided himself till he gets something turned round and faces it. There we go. He definitely has changed his hand. Will he reach the head? Wide enough. He looks down the hill. Once it goes, it goes on that side. There it goes. Especially with John's balls. Especially taking a big finish. Even with that weight, he was ditch length. Ball could be key, it just stayed on there at the end. Well, <laughs> Graham may be lying the shot, but he'll be desperate to cover a line to this jack. The one thing he doesn't want to leave is an exposed jack here for we John to have a good run at it if he needs to. Movement of the jack, a cover of the jack, anything to just hide that straight line to the white. Has he done it? Just not making not, a trip. not pushed it. He'll be a bit upset with that. He'll be really upset with that. He's basically given John an open draw to win the match here. He can afford to reach it, he's got the back ball. If he's on the high side, he can come off his own ball. He's trying to will himself into this. <coughs> he's started to chase it again. He's really confident with this one. But he's pushed it wide, I think. Is he coming off the balls, like I said? Not quite, still one red. And the chance missed there. Graham breathes a sigh of relief, picks up a one and moves up to 20 14 down. First half of this game was quite scrappy, but the second half has been really interesting with the tactical side and players jumping from hand to hand and that length. I'm sticking with his favourite full length jack. We've not had a full length jack at this light coming this way for a few ends. It's back onto the backhand that had been playing well earlier in this game. Aye. I think he's just missed the line a fraction now. Oh, that would be devastated with that. That's seven, eight feet short. the shot, 18 inches from the white. Well, I don't, I don't know what to make of that. <laughs> I'm sure if I don't know, Graham's got no idea what to make of it because he's been catching that hand fantastic to end up that short twice. As you said, Andy, it's the first time I've played a full length jack really? coming down in this direction. wonder if it's a wee bit heavier. The only thing John will be happy with that is it's a back ball. Graham will be desperate to draw one into the head here. He doesn't want to leave it till his last ball. Has he reached it this time? He's shot again. It's quite amazing. It can only be down to tension, pressure that. 
shaking his head. John will be looking to get one right in close here. Aye. Put Graham under a lot of pressure with his last pull. <laughs> I think me and John will be absolutely stunned by what's happened this end. He doesn't even have to play two decent balls in his line too. Yeah, he's dropping shot as well. <laughs> He'll be trying to convince everybody that was a blocker. <laughs> Just shows how tension can affect players. They've been getting them close. Pressure goes on. Amazing end. If this is the last end, it'll be quite extraordinary. He's got to reach the head this time. It's not easy for Graham because exactly. of course he's got to miss John's last exactly. ball now. And the law of bowls says that you're going to be near it. Exactly. That's the law of bowls for you. Amazing last end. See John Strachan I'd like to do that victory there. Yes, Graham will be absolutely bemused what happened there. 21 14 to John Strachan from Holdsworth. He moves through the next round. Well, so he'll play the winner of Blair Davidson and exactly. Kevin It'll Wallace at half five this evening in the quarter final. Exactly. It'll be an interesting tussle whoever gets through in that other game. Thanks everybody for tuning in. I believe we're going to move now on to the game on the next round between Billy Millers of Haddington against Dean Fleming of Curry. We'll reload, we'll move across and we'll get back to you and bring you some action from that. Of course, there's a legend, Willie Wood, MBE, sitting in the crowd. Willie, yeah.